So this is my bioactive enclosure. I get lots of questions about it. This is for Sunny, my ball python. And one of the big things that you've been asking is how I actually maintain and clean this. Again, this is my only one. I have others in the works right now, hopefully. But I thought I'd just show you the process that I go through with every week or day or whatever, and how exactly I maintain it. So maintenance is different for me. I can't like do zero maintenance. I guess that would kind of be the dream if you could do the perfect bioactive enclosure. So usually when I show this enclosure in videos, I shoot all of the video of it right after I clean it and spray it. So it looks really nice, all the leaves are glistening, the lighting is perfect, all the soil looks good and you've got everything, like no dead leaves and stuff. But I've neglected this longer than I should have, um, which Sonny's the ball python, he's fine, he's getting his food and water and everything, and, but the plants have not really gotten what they should have. Uh, so today you'll see just how it looks when it's uh, been ignored a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and clean it all and fix it up. So right from the start, you can kind of you might notice a couple things compared to how it looks otherwise. Uh, these branches they just fall over because then he's active at night and he pushes them all over the place. So that's fine; doesn't really matter. There's a couple dead leaves in the back. That plant's been a little bit dry. I think I don't know why it's drier than the others. I think because it has even more drainage and more airflow through that area far in the back. Uh, the water bowl there's it's at an angle, so the back looks like it's almost empty. But there's about half an inch or so in the front. Obviously, they should be full. There's also some, some dirt in it and some moss. Uh, little moss bits are kind of hanging all over the place. This isn't dangerous, it's just sphagnum, but I'll wash all of that out. And then there's just like a couple pieces of snake shed I missed last time. There might be some snake poop hiding in the back so we can look for that. And then just watering everything. So if I'm just watering the enclosure or something, I don't actually take stuff out. I'm just gonna take these sticks out so that I can pull the hide out and just see if there's anything hiding back there. Sunny's urates tend to be in the back. I don't know, I guess just because he hangs out back there. Uh, but the springtails do not do anything to the urates. Now they do help take care of the snake poop. Obviously you don't just want to leave a bunch of snake poop in there because it's not going to get all of it. Uh, we'll get onto that if we see what's back here. Here's the, the man himself hanging out uh, far in the back corner. Also a lot of you ask, I've mentioned this before, there's like four or five inches of substrate right here in the front. Uh, and you're like, how does the heat mat even work through that? Which there is a heat mat back there. So what I've done is you might be able to see it right now. There's a dip from the start and this is about four inches. And then down to the back and only goes down to about half an inch to an inch. So it basically like sits in a hole back there, which I then cover with a hide. So you can't actually tell that there's a dip, uh, which I have no drainage layer in here. I did another video on that, which you can watch here. Uh, somewhere. And the nice thing about that is I can still use a heat mat. So it's just going through a little bit of substrate and then the thermostat probe is right under that substrate um, to regulate it. Normally I don't take any plants out. However, these bromeliads, I am very new with bromeliads. You can see there's some dead stuff right here on the side simply because I just, these should be sprayed like daily. I've only been doing them a few times a week. Clearly I just need to pick up my pace with that. Uh, so I'm just going to peel these layers off. I guess it's safe to peel them off. I don't even know. This one's not ready to come off. I'm gonna leave that. And then these, it depends how many leaves I end up getting. Usually it's only a couple. So I'll literally just toss them back in there to help work into the soil. Uh, but otherwise, if there are an abundance, which hopefully there, oh, Sonny, you're choking me. Which hopefully there are not too many in here. Uh, but if there ever are, I can just toss them outside or throw them away. So I don't move certain things really at all. For example, this piece of cork stays here all the time, uh, along with basically all the other plants. But if you see, if I lift it up, we have roots coming out of the bottom that are directly into that. So I guess that kind of shows how not often I move stuff. <laughs> so this might sound all philosophical, but uh, when you do have everything, like so if you have a normal enclosure, you might have to take everything out and replace it all and scrub it all whenever, however often you do that. But when you are leaving stuff just in the place and letting us do its natural thing, it all really becomes part of it. It becomes intertwined and 
one being. <laughs> it's cool, I don't know. Sorry, it's ending here in the way again. So because these plants usually need quite a bit of water each, uh, and because they go through it a lot faster, I usually just directly water each individual plant. My guess is when I do slightly more dry bioactive vivarium, it's not necessarily dry, but like moderate or whatever, but whatever, the basically plants that need less water, I can probably just spray the entire enclosure and not water them directly. But that's what I'm gonna do here because I feel like I need to. So normally this is really the only thing that I do, just watering the plants, giving it a spray, and then wiping the glass, which I haven't done yet and I haven't sprayed it or anything. However, maybe you've noticed, you cannot see this glass really at all other than a little reflection there. I hate water stains on enclosures, it's the worst thing. It ruins like so many reptile videos. Okay, that was way too much water. But if you have glass stains, please get rid of them. They're so annoying, it's really not, it, it can be hard if they've been there for a long time, but I'll link some products in the description that I've used to get rid of them, uh, and they work super well. Okay, just dump the water all over the floor. Next up, I'm gonna give the entire enclosure a spray. Also, just quick side note, not sponsored or anything, but this All Living Things spray bottle is pretty nice. Look at how big of a... It's like a huge misting, I don't know. Maybe it's not that special. I'll link up below if you want with an Amazon affiliate link <laughs> if you happen to need a new spray bottle. What I can do is if I need to, I can spray individual plants even more. See, now you can't see because it's so messy, but we'll get onto that in just a second. Well, you now look at that. You can't see through the enclosure. Very simple, just wipe it. I'm very annoyed by people that don't wipe it. <laughs> that don't wipe their enclosures. Okay, so now that it's all wiped, all sprayed, all cleaned, this is when I'd usually record a video from this point on when it looks much fancier. But either way, I think it looks really nice from the start. Really the last thing I do from there, if it's one of these more longer cleaning days, is I just kind of look at everything and see if I like where everything is. It's like a little art piece that you can move around. For example, that vine, I have a little uh, wire thingy holding that vine into the side so that it'll grow up the back. Uh, if I want to move bromeliads, I can. If I think something just looks out of place or I need more dirt in a certain area, I can just adjust it however I want. But the far majority of the time, it's really just spraying the plants and getting things that the springtails don't get out. For example, they really don't trust the urates or the snake sheds. Pretty much everything else they do themselves if there is like a full load of snake poop, then I'll have to get that and then just toss that out myself. Uh, but Sunny's off feed right now, so he hasn't pooped in a little while. So the springtails have gotten a break, which I guess they prefer to have food than not have food but they've got leaves and everything else. So daily maintenance might take, I don't know, less than 10 minutes, just a quick spray. Uh, but if I'm doing a more detailed something like this, like what I just did, then this might take maybe 20 or 30 minutes, depending on how long I take to do everything. Uh, much more manageable, definitely worth it. Things like the soil is much richer, will be much healthier for the plants, since it actually biodegrades stuff and works it through this, the natural system compared to just throwing it all away and replacing it. And everything's like that. Uh, Sunny's still hanging out with me. Usually Sunny can just stay in the enclosure while I do it. So if you want any of the products that I used in this, I have them linked in a kit in the description. I have the build video that I did of this. I had an update of this. I did, I've done lots of bioactive things. I'm gonna make a playlist with all of them. So you can look at that and find all the supplies I used. I keep asking questions on this. I wanna try more stuff. You can suggest plants, suggest things I do. Uh, next up, the enclosure I'm, I will be doing is Gobi, my corn snake. I got a 40 gallon for him, so I'm uh, working on plans for that and figuring out what exactly I'll do uh, to make sure that is different. Gonna go let Sunny chill out in this. 